Okay. Uh, Michael Linsenmeyer, thank you for a $10 super chat. I have the Gep RC Cinewhoop 35 V2 frame. Is there a way to swap out the mount on the motor with a 12x12, or do you know of an adapter? I, mean, I know I could just buy the right motors, but I don't want to. I don't, I don't think this is a good direction to go, Michael. Um, you know, with the power of 3D printing, you could certainly make an adapter. It seems like you could. Uh, it's going to be clunky. The, the Cinewhoop, the Cinelog 3.5 has inverted motors. So you're going to push the motors closer to the ground with this adapter plate. Uh, I just think that probably you should just buy the right motors. So yes, you can. No, I don't know of an adapter. Uh, and no, I don't think you should do this. I don't think you're going to get a good result. But yes, it probably exists. Um, I don't know if you can like literally swap out the mount. Uh, I'm sure GEPRC hasn't made a different motor mount. They assume that you're going to use. The real question is, like, what 12 by 12 motors are you trying to use? Because usually the mounting size of the motors uh, of the frame is suited for the size of motor that makes the most sense for that frame. Um, thank you, FP Wee, for $4.99. Thanks for all the info. More of a PSA. I cleaned my DJ FPV. Uh, I'm not judging you for cleaning it. I'm judging you for owning it. No, I'm joking. I cleaned my DJI FPV with electrical cleaner, and it basically imploded. DJI replaced. Fair enough. Thanks, DJI. It's a 16 by 16 Michael. You're going to run a 3.5 inch prop on a 2207 motor? Why, Michael? Why? What you don't I don't want to presume I don't want to. <laughs> what? The original question says I know I can buy the right motors, but I don't want to. Yeah, you're going to you're going to so that's going to just be, it's way too much motor for that prop. You're going to have a ton of additional weight. The KV is not going to be right. You're going to have a ton of additional weight for no benefit. And you're going to have to, Bannister Post says I run five blade, four inch props on 2207. Yup, Bannister Post. In fact, Bannister Post, oh, it's not here. It's in the closet, and I don't feel like getting up to get it. I've got the um, Catalyst Machine Works Whoop Master. It runs 2207 motors on five blade, or maybe even, yeah, I think it's five blade uh, whoop props. Absolutely. But he's on three and a half inch props, and there's a difference. And that Cinelog isn't, the frame isn't made to carry that much weight. No, it's a... Uh, just, just so silly. It's just silly. Um, my official advice is don't do it. Don't do it. Save those motors for a different build and get the right motors. Night Owl, it's, it's a six blade? Okay. Yeah, a six blade, four inch, is suited for a 2207. One IFPV once built a 5-inch quad with 2806.5 motors. Also a terrible idea. <laughs> um, okay. It says, hey, JB, I built a 3.5-inch 4S, and I'm having trouble. I used Brother Hobby 4150KV 1507s in a Speedy B stack, having desync issues and burnt out the ESC. Am I exceeding the bandwidth of the 8-bit ESC with this combo? No. No, that last sentence doesn't even really sort of parse to me. An 8-bit ESC can a thousand percent handle 4150 KV on 4S. It's, I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure like the, the bit count of the ESC necessarily relates to the max RPM, but you're nowhere near it. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, my guess is you just got unlucky and had a bad ESC. Uh, so what I would do is I would uh, go back to Speedy B, 
tell them what happened and see if you can get them to send you another ESC. I have heard more than one story of them going, oh yeah, my bad, sorry about the inconvenience, and sending out free replacement ESCs. I'm not making, I obviously can't promise you that they'll do that, but it's worth, it's worth a try. You don't have to just take the loss. Is it still a thing, Night Owl asks, is it still a thing that below a certain power, you don't need a ham license? That's never been a thing. Night Owl? I, I, I'm having a reaction right now. I want you to know this reaction is not directed at you. It was just sort of triggered by you. But I don't know how this misconception got out into the world. And I have tried and tried for years to fight the misconception. And it, 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 I am losing that fight. And so that's why I'm having a reaction right now. In the United States, it has never. Are you in the United States? If you're in the year, if you're in the EU, that's different. In the United States, it has never been a thing that you can use a video transmitter under twenty, like at twenty-five milliwatts, and don't need a ham license. Period. The way the rule works is, if the device has a Part Fifteen certification then you do not need a ham license to use it. That's why you can use your cell phone. That's why you can use your Wi-Fi router. That's why I can use this wireless mouse and I don't need a ham license. All of these devices are parts 15 certified. What that means is that the manufacturer sent them to a lab, the lab tested them, the lab affirmed that they comply with the restrictions of part 15 None of the video transmitters, the analog, none of the analog video transmitters that we use have Part 15 certification. Therefore, all of them require a ham license to use, period. Regardless of output power. Now, I believe that in Europe, there's a rule that if you're at 25 milliwatts or below, you don't need a license. That's different. That's not in the U.S., though. Um, Peyton Nelson, thanks for a $5 super chat. My last super chat last week popped up late. Oops. Is the 2107.5 better than 2207? Because the industry looks like it's moving to tall and skinny motors. Um, Peyton Nelson, I would debate you that 2107.5 is tall and skinny. Um, uh, 2107.5 is is close to the optimal, so it's pretty subtle. 2207, 2107.5. It's pretty subtle difference, and most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference except on a bench. So I reserve my judgment until somebody like Chris Rosser puts it on a thrust stand. That's the only way to really know what's happening in the motor. But Chris Rosser tested the GEPRC uh, motor. The GEPRC Mark V moved to... What motor is it? Um, 2107.5. Yeah. And, and Chris Rosser tested that motor and it did really, really well. So 2107.5 isn't that tall and skinny. It's pretty close to the optimal ratio. The, what is it? The three, five, six ratio or something that Chris Rosser suggested would have the best balance of responsiveness and heat dissipation. 